All right, bang, bang. It's the rundown from Chicago. It is Wednesday. It's November 10th. How's everybody doing? I feel refreshed. I'm good. Refreshed. Big trip. Monday Night Football. Mm -hmm. Boys are back locked in. Yeah, we got a bye week. Feel good about that. Tragic loss. So sad about that loss. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Devastated. Yeah, a devastated couch, devastated room. Uh, This rundown is brought to you by Mac Weldon. We love what you do, and we don't want you to change. Their collective success depends on you staying true to your personal brand and style. That's speaking your language right there. I mean, it's like I wrote that. Yes. Like I I wrote their manifesto, their ad read there. Exactly. So uh, you're a busy guy. So you know what? I'm going to buy some of their clothes. That's that's great. Yeah. That's great. So you're a busy guy, so stop thinking about what to wear and just embrace the radically efficient Mac Weldon Daily Wear System. The Daily Wear System is a selection of clothes rooted in smart design, made with performance fabrics, and built to work together. From breathable t-shirts and polos to stylish button-ups and shorts, underwear, and beyond, Mack Weldon makes it easy for you to dress for your work, leisure, and play. Dave, your favorite Mack Weldon product that you've purchased before? I wear the crew neck all the time. You guys see me in it constantly. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's not fitting exactly well because we'll get to this in a little bit. It used to. Jerry, it used to fit absolutely perfectly, but I got <laughs> disgustingly fat over the last few months. And um, Mac you know, Weldon, I love it. Great fall line, Mac Weldon. Big time. Mm-hmm. You like to see that. All the cl- all the clothes are designed to work together. You know, they got the ultimate lazy Sunday type wear. They got their ace sweat shorts. They have modern tailoring and pair. They pair perfectly with ultra soft, ultra upgraded. Pima tees. Pima tees. For weekend travels both near and far, their silver knit polo and radius shorts are the perfect high-tech, highly packable combo. Um, for 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash rundown and enter promo code rundown. MacWeldon.com slash rundown. Rundown. Code rundown, 20% off. All right, first topic, Paul Rudd named Sexiest Man Alive in 2021 by People Magazine. Uh, Dave, we'll start with you today. He's a good-looking cat. I've never, I've, I know these sexiest man and woman lives have been around forever. Cause, uh, so my gym teacher looked exactly like someone I forget who it was who was named sexiest man of the year, and I remember my mom bringing it up when I was like seven. So it's been a long, it's been around forever, and um, I've never actually read an article though. Is it like a bunch of things that go into it, or is it just looks? I. Th- I don't know. Is it like their whole body of work in like? I well, do. Dave, when you're attracted to a woman, is it about looks? Is it the way she talks to I you? Can is it be not the same thing. It's not the same thing, but it 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 depends. I would like say there, there's a bunch of different scenarios where I could be like that girl's a ten out of ten, mm-hmm. or uh, or like you know she her personality can amp- absolutely amplify her on the 10 point scale. This does feel scale. like a, a lifetime achievement award. Like that guy has not aged. Like he looks no, the he, exact same looking, as yeah. he did. How old is he? It's like 50 now. But without him being 50. like the cool guy, Kansas city Royals, is he the sexiest man alive? That's what I, I'm saying. I is think... it just straight like aesthetics or is it like the normal guy vibe? When that I makes hear him the sexiest sexier? man alive, I think he, aesthetics. I think they're redefining it. He's got a nice face. He's non-threatening. He's like the perfect 2021 sexiest man alive. Like he's nice. He'll read your story. I'm not gonna He'll argue it. He's fire. a yeah. smoking hot looking dude. He's a, he's a handsome man, but he's like not like. Actually, you know what? That's a better way to put it. He's so much more handsome than like everybody, but like smoking hot. I don't know. No, he's just like <laughs> he's just a nice. He's got a nice face, Carl. I mean, I definitely don't want to get plowed by Paul Rudd. You know, I don't think he's like that type of sexy guy, but I think it's a more of a statement about the importance of being like a funny, kind person these days. Where like they're valuing the fact that he is without a doubt. The kindest, cutest, funniest, Gentle. warmest, yeah, like tier yeah. tier one A list celebrity. Mm-hmm. I give the guy credit. I mean, it's going on twenty six, twenty seven years since he starred in Clueless alongside yeah. Alicia Silverstone. It's, and it, th- that guy versus the grown up or the role models, mm-hmm. role models, Paul Rudd, Clueless, Paul Rudd, Ant Man, Halloween Six, Paul Rudd, it's the same Paul Rudd. This is forty Halloween knocked six, up. Yeah. This is uh, it's a it's a big one okay. for like the pumpkin patch apple picking crew. Like that, this is a guy who's taking you. To I, can I say this? I think though? he's short too, Dave. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought the same thing. I just looked at the cover and he looks hot as fuck. Does he? Yeah, I'm sure that's. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, this is. Yeah, he looks. Like, yeah, he looks great. You know who he kind of looks he like? Looks uh, Ed Burns a little bit too. Like I feel like those guys are a little bit. Yeah, I can see, the, especially in that picture. Ed Burns. Uh, 
like director uh, producer. I thought of the alderman for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I just hope what? Paul Rudd doesn't have a fall from grace because he might be the most like him. He seems like he Ryan did Hollywood rights. There's a couple people that are just yeah. too good and too pure where yeah. it's like I don't even want to get a trace of scandal or whatever. You're too yeah. good. Well, Stay some good. Will, some will have a problem with him at some point, right? And, uh, I'm sure. Fine. Yeah, that's the way the world works. Uh, next topic, actually, we'll, we'll stay in that kind of vein. Tottenham's Antonio Conte, maybe that's their coach. Carl, would you happen to know? I th- you're yeah, I, th- I think that's the coach. Uh, their, or their manager, I forget what they call it. Manager. Um, well, they, you could be the coach, but then they could promote you to manager. There's some guys who coach, but they don't manage. Or... Ah, okay. Uh, he's worried about some Tottenham players Thanks. being fat, so he banned ketchup, mayo, and sandwiches. Cut those carbs, baby. Yeah, Chief, you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I love all those things, so I would have a real you hard time. You love mayo? I, li- I, like, I like mayo, yeah. I like mayo on, like, a turkey club sandwich. I like chicken salad. I like tuna salad. Like, that's all heavy mayo, so I'm fine with mayo. Um, but, yeah, like, I just can't imagine. Like, this is what, like, makes me feel bad about myself is because if you ever watch a soccer game, they're, like, the most fit guys on the planet. Yeah, there's like, no What fat the soccer fuck players. is a fat soccer player? And like, especially if you're running that much like those guys they are. They like, eight miles a game minimum. It's crazy. It's crazy. Is that is that right? Eight miles. Yeah, they have the trackers for the guys who are usually like those. uh, They call the box to box players. They go defense all the way to offense. The midfielders they run like eight to twelve miles a game. Carl, your Carl, your thoughts? Catch up, Mayo. Should those be the first cuts to go? I I don't think those should be the first cuts. There's probably more, uh, but this speaks more to the behavior of soccer. I I think this is interest. Why soccer is so interesting to me now in the modern game is because, like, obviously the coach wants the team to perform better. So he's going down this nutritious path, and he takes out mayo, ketchup, sandwiches. The NBA, a team wants to get better. They go to MIT. They hire scientists. They break down fucking player. Like, as far as how advanced sports are getting. And then you go over to the English Premier League. And <laughs> Tottenham's physios. like, yeah. Like, we're, how much ketchup can anybody eat? We're, like, we're yeah. taking fish and chips off the menu. These guys are going to run harder, play faster. Like, it's just kind of funny how, how silly this is It's all. also crazy, like, I feel like over here – like you used to hear about, like Derrick Rose had like the worst diet, like the gummy so, bears or whatever, Skittles, Skittles or, like yeah. the the uh, the sour patch rope or whatever that was. Like he would just eat all that shit when he first came in the league. But now it's just like all those guys, just seemingly maybe not all of them, but a lot of the guys of culture just you just do it on your own. Like Duncan Keith's a psychopath. Like the, Tom Brady like doesn't eat tomato. Like that's like part of the culture over there. Even though they're like, the most fit guys in the world, they're like removing things selectively from the kitchen, like the team training table. It's crazy. Yeah. Dave, I that, like Mary. Fuck, wh- kill those three. How? Mary sandwiches. Yeah, you got to marry. I'm with sandwiches for life. Okay, kill but the at the same two. time to lose weight, that's obviously what you cut out. Like, how much ketchup what? can you possibly eat? You don't like mayo? What the fuck is wrong with you? A I'm, lot of people don't like. That's mayo. not what I'm yeah. saying. Clean the potatoes out of yours. I'm I talking to Ed. Sorry, Dave. To cut weight. Obviously, you're going to stop eating sandwiches because it's you're eating a lot of sandwich. But ketchup, how much ketchup can anybody on the planet Consume possibly high eat? High sugar content, though. But you're putting like a a, a swirl on know, a man. hot dog or whatever. some gross fucks who go in on their fries that just yeah. fucking lather. Yeah, them. I mean, I do that with my fries, but like I would kill mayo. I, I don't dislike mayo, though. I think I'm killing ketchup. I had a buddy break up with his girlfriend over mayo once. Wow. wow. What she, do you mean? She ate it with a spoon out of the jar. Oh, he, this, I would do that. I would break up for that. No, too. it wasn't like, can't, he, can't, like yeah, this guy despised do me. I don't know if I can get into it, but I'll tell you guys off the record. Yeah, yeah that's he, like for the people. Yeah. I, I wish I could. I don't want to fucking you, out this that's guy. Journalism, the the, what I've learned about journalism is that as long as you change the names, you can make up anything you want. <laughs> yeah, just, just do that. He just didn't like mayo, and she bought mayo. And uh, like they had already been, it, it's you know classic. There's there was pre Straw fights that broke before the that. Back, yeah. There was yeah, and then like she came back and she bought mayo. And he's like, that's it. Told you not to buy mayo, <laughs> and then that was legitimately. Then they haven't spoke again. Well, how am I supposed to buy a house with you and ha- raise a family and have and go through all these challenges in life if you can't even understand the simple concept of I hate mayo? And the thing was, she was in on the no mayo train. Like she stopped eating it too, and then once they got into the fight, he bought mayo. So it was kind of like well, she did that as like a fuck you. Yeah, she's like you know. Oh well, then that's different. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like grounds for termination. Yeah, so. yeah. I like Miracle Whip. I like Miracle Whip. I don't. I don't know if um, that. It's. I enjoy it. It's fake mayonnaise. It's disgusting. All right, there. Ugh. Mayo is kind of gross on its own, even though it's good. It tastes good. It's objectively disgusting. 
But Miracle Whip is like a fake version. Yeah, I can't do it. You wouldn't touch it. Probably not. Yeah, you wouldn't touch it. I, I'm not going to say it. All right. Well, you can't do that now either. All right, next topic here. We got Scottie Pippen has now resorted to talking shit about Michael Jordan's flu game. He said, is it easier to play with a herniated disc or to play with the flu? Well, I don't see many bad back games, but I do see flu games. Flu, come on, Carl. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is because everybody's against the flu now because COVID's so big. People forgot about the flu that he's just going to try and, like, lump Michael Jordan's flu game into the fact. They're like, whoa, what about the flu? Don't forget, MJ had the flu. Uh, personally, though, it's just you look at Scott, he's just fallen so far from grace. It's a tough watch. But at some level, I'm waiting to transition to the part where I start to re-respect Scotty Pippen for the fact that it's like 27 years later and you're still talking about the shot. He's still talking about the flu game fucking 24 years later. It's crazy how much this guy's dialed in. Fake news, Scotty Pippen. Everybody knows it was food poisoning now. Food poisoning is worse than the flu. So fuck off, Scotty. Like, I, I'm, I'm tired of this. Like, I'm tired of the Scotty. Like, stop with the quotes. I know you're trying to sell a book. You might need the money, but like, enough. Like, you got six rings. You got paid in, by Houston and Portland. Like, leave it alone. It's sad, it's it. sad yeah. he needs the money. Yeah, it, it's does, right? sad, but, like, don't – like, he's looking for reactions. He's looking for attention. That's what you do when you sell a book. Like, name yeah, a person who sold an autobiography or – Yeah. Or bi- what's the difference between auto and biography? A biography, you often uh, – someone, someone wrote it about, about you, you, and if you auto wrote it, you wrote it yourself. Ah, okay. Thank Ed, you for that. Come on, man. What? Well, it's a question. Are you going to read it or listen to it? I'm neither. <laughs> neither. Okay. Ed. Neither. What? Is, was that that bad of a question? I don't that's think like so. a, that's Everybody like a knows. third grade book fair. You probably I didn't picked know. that up. Sorry. I think more people would would at, would be, would be ask that question if, if they knew they wouldn't be judged the way these two fucking guys just judged you. Yeah, no. I didn't judge. I answered the question. Yeah. I, mean, I, just I, I was I, I did. Okay. I did. Like that like I feel like that was like <laughs> that you discussed that. I like I remember learning that in elementary school, like maybe specifically at a book fair. Oh, oh. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I was I gave my like under my breath like what comment and I didn't want to dig in deeper. Out of respect to you. Well you, I mean the damage is done. But yeah, yeah autobiographies are, are they seem kind of selfish. Or like like I'm gonna sit down and write so, about somewhere along the way. Does they, it become a memoir? Yes. And it's like autobiography wasn't fancy enough or elite enough, so now people call them, oh, this is my memoir. I think presidential memoirs are pretty cool. Like the idea of like sitting down and reflecting. Carl, but, didn't you say you were going to write an autobiography on yourself one day? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, oh, you did. Maybe. Yeah, if you're looking for the Chicago take, it's just like this is par for the course for Scottie Pippen. Yeah. He's selling books, and we're kind of like – we're not done with this shit. I think we always said we'll we'll always love Scotty, but like we take it with a grain of salt. It's an eye roll thing from me. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. He yeah. was much better at playing defense and being a Swiss Army knife on a basketball court than he has been in post retirement. Great way to put it. Uh, next thing, flying motorcycles are on the way. They're expected to hit the skies in twenty twenty three. Bullshit, Dave. Bullshit. Chief. What do you mean bullshit? You really think there's going to be flying motorcycles no, in 2020? No, but I like... Maybe zipping I down Milwaukee Avenue and all right, like, so oh, the, look. This is the closest thing we've come to, like, the hoverboard from uh, Back to the Future 2, where you're just going to, yeah. like, zip around in the air. I really love that idea. I'm not... I don't... I, I'm very afraid of, like, real motorcycles. Like, I don't think I'd ever get on it. I hate when they drive by. They're too loud. A flying one, if it's high enough where a parachute could save me, I'm in on that. I'll do a flying motorcycle all the time. I would do a flying motorcycle before a real motorcycle, yeah. too. Because I feel like you there, could, if, there wouldn't be traffic in the air, right? And well, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not. I just need to be higher than like street traffic, right? I mean, what's so, the big excuse know? to people? Or the big thing that people say about motorcycles? It's not how you drive; it's other people. So exactly, that's why I want to get on a motorcycle. Yeah. yeah, but they also a lot of times drive like assholes in traffic. Yeah, so. but I think my point was, mine and Dave's point was, we would. It's not that we wouldn't be interested. We just don't think it's going to happen. Well, I mean, well, we talk about a prototype. We talk about like, oh, here's the flying motorcycle from Tesla. When we say flying motorcycle, we mean like it gets high in the air. Is it just like a little hover? Yeah. And when we say motorcycle, is it like actually a motorcycle? I need it to go high enough in the air where I can wear a parachute. So if I like it, like just I'm like, like pull yeah, the string. Right. And then I'm fine. Seems like an unnecessary amount of risk. My dad got a Harley. I think that make, it makes it more safe than a regular motorcycle. No. I feel like it would. No, nah, I'm yeah. out on this, I think. My dad got a Harley when uh, probably about 
10, 12 years ago. And he took it every, he would take it up to Lake Geneva all the time and everything. And then when his first grandkid was born, he got rid of it. And I'm like, I remember asking him like, why the grandkid? Like, why not your normal kids? He's like, I don't care about you. <laughs> like, I don't care about you. Yeah. You're on your own now. Like, I don't care about you. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see when it hits the skies. But you're not in on it. I don't know. I mean, if, like you said, the only advantage would be if it could go that high and you could beat traffic. But if so, people are going to be doing that, there's going to be, like, scorned ex-boyfriends, like, driving them into apartments and shit. Like, it's going to be, like, <laughs> I'm thinking the worst. Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah dude. All right. Take that into account. You, got, you got a point. And you know? if why motorcycles? Why not just cars? Yeah, more aerodynamic. I guess it's easier to do it on a. I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. a good point, Dave. Yeah, I mean, and is it something I can just like go like I get my driver's test? Yeah, you know, know, take a driver's test. You go driver school, and you're. And you to know, me, it's gonna wanting... be it's gonna be heavy do surely. You know, like it's the guys who got the fucking jetpacks in the San Francisco Bay yeah. who are like they, these are the guys who are do gonna you, have this. Do first. you think motorcycles are heavy douche already? Because mm. I do. Oh, jeez. I think if you have like the, uh, like the, what are like, what do they call those? A little like the Honda, Honda, Honda. Oh, those are different. Yeah. Yeah. What, are motorcycles an rockets. American thing, or did they originate somewhere else? They're from here originally, in the 1880s. That's kind of cool. I think it, if you could pull off a Harley, that's not a douche move. I would agree. I'm talking about like the crotch like, rockets, yes. like the Yamaha. That's the word yeah. I was looking for. A crotch rocket. Yeah, I don't like those. No. Yeah. Those guys, I think, are douchebags. Those guys I'm are not, fucking crazy people too, because those things go like People with the motorcycle are watching this right now, and they feel slighted. I, sorry, I think you're a douchebag. <laughs> you have to look at me. <laughs> I'm, not I'm, I'm responding to the motorcycle. Responding to your comment. I ride a trek. He has spoken. <laughs> he has spoken. Uh, last topic here: High school basketball player throws hat maker. At haymaker. Up haymaker. Haymaker. That's on Danny. Sorry, yeah, yeah Danny. Uh, Throws haymaker at opposing player after flopping her face off. Girl gets concussion. Um, Dave. I, 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 come back to me. Right. <laughs> come back to me. I have a question for Dave. I have a question for Dave. I have a question go for ahead. Dave. Is it, as a baseball guy, when you read a headline that a high school, a high school girl is out here dropping fucking haymakers. Is a baseball guy, does that, when you see the benches clear and these grown men dancing around each other, like, does it change knowing there's a 15 year old girl out here in Ohio just fucking dropping bitches with haymakers? Not really. Um, I just, I was going to answer this from my perspective if, if that happened to me while I was playing sports. So, hypothetically, if, and I, I don't think I've ever been in this position, but hypothetically, if, I was like on a football field and someone was trying to like, he was flapping and like trying to go to the referees into throwing a flag. I would take his number down. And the second I had a window of opportunity, I would clip him so hard that I would try to hurt him. I absolutely, that's how I played at least. So I kind of got inside with the puncher on this one. Okay. I mean, I just watched it. It was vicious. Like, gutless punch like the girl wasn't looking at her i no. see i would see, i would i was it's talking tough. i would do it within the means of the rules of the game too like if we were running for a 60 yard touchdown which happened frequently yeah wasn't ever me running the ball i would look at like the lineman and i would just decleat him 60 yards from the play but it would be like while he wasn't paying attention because the play was already more or less over that's what i would do but if if it's a sucker punch no yeah so the girl takes the shot she gets like nudged by this other girl it's going back down the floor the other way. They both get up. Like the girl, the girl who took the shot took a big flop. Walks down the walks down the court. They get about half court, and she just like hooks her right to the face. Like they're standing like how you and I are sitting, but just clocks her right in the face. Okay, yeah, no, not Can't like have that. It. That's dirty. Yeah, you gotta square up. Squ yeah, you gotta square up. Square up, and then it's on that girl to answer the bell. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, this was yeah, this was dirty. Yeah. Was, yeah. Was, yeah, it's bad. That was tough. Yeah. You can't be clocking people like that. Nope. Um, you ever thrown a punch in a sport, Ed? No. No? No. Is that anybody? I got kicked out of my last football game. We're last, a punch? Last play of the game. I get yeah. a technical in sixth grade. Yeah, we we got into a – it was actually a pretty decent brawl for a – we got into it against April Central my freshman year. 
my mom made me call the kid's house and apologize too. <laughs> not him to the dad because she rode the train downtown with the dad. And she was like, hey, we got home from the basketball game. She was so mad. She's like, I'm calling Mr. Marzak right now. And you are getting on the phone with him. I'm like, hey, Mr. Marzak, it's Michael yeah. Sturk. I committed a technical on Timmy today. Yeah. Uh, that was a humbling experience, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's, I just got the standard uh, bounce the ball at the ref technical. You did? And one time I, I was kind of rude to a mom because she wouldn't stop yelling the whole game. Oh, to a mom? Opposing mom. She was, like, screaming the whole time. And I, I think like, you got to leave the moms alone. Well, she was, like, and there was, like, a close. We had a tight gym. So what, like, what, what, what? Ball in the stands, you? and it was right through. She was, like, yelling in my ear. What? We were like Eighth middle, grade. Middle school? Okay. Yeah. When did the famous, uh, the yip start? People know you that. You started story? seventh grade. Okay. Yeah. So you were grade. probably already having a hard time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Th things were going south. We you got to tell the Yip story. How was St. Yeah. Francis Borgia at, uh, at basketball? You guys have a good squad? We were good. We won sixth grade. We won the title, and then we uh, we kind of just regressed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we just never got better. And we, everyone, we were always the tallest guys, yeah. and then everyone caught up to us, and we were kind of just. The White Sox Dave. Yeah. yeah. Bunch of meats. <laughs> tell us from there. Bunch of meats running around. <laughs> Um, all right, this kind of is the after show. You guys have anything to bring to the table? I feel like people need to know about your yips. Like that's like to me, that's just a funny story that you've had the yips since you were in seventh grade. Yeah, I broke my ankle in seventh grade, and I used to be pretty good. I was a good shooter, mm -hmm. um, and I, I came back seventh grade for whatever. Uh, but I shot for my chest, so it was not a good shot. Okay, but it, it landed. Effective. It was. It was like it was a, no. Yeah, it was objectively like a a su successful shot mm -hmm. and they were like no like next level like whatever so they like had me do all these fuck and this my dad was a coach I st i'm still mad at him about it like <laughs> him and the assistant they had us do all these drills with like the fucking you know the velcro thing where you put it it's like no, a fucking dude. catcher's yeah, mitt yeah. oh you, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The they tennis had, ball catcher mitt thing? i'll never forget they had us doing this drill where that was like your other hand yeah so it keeps you your like, hand on the side yes. of the ball so yeah. it's not too controlling i swear to god that stupid fucking velcro thing ruined me for life <laughs> <laughs> ruined me for life I, I could i still can't shoot i still like i don't like it's not natural damn that's know. tragic ed i know you might be in the nba and not hosting this rundown yeah, if, after it, show right if now. it weren't for you getting proper instruction you would have been so much better yeah <laughs> yeah probably that's what i'm thinking yeah that's like throwing the first like playing softball pitching like i had, no like i had to use my freshman year throwing the ball first i could throw it to any other base put it on the money and Were you, okay, so I I did the major league too. I thought of porn stars. That was, was what? That, that was two, right? When uh, the catcher couldn't throw it back to the pitcher. It's Victoria or er, play playmates. Playmates, yeah. He'd recite so, their facts of the month about him. Yeah, so Miss that's June. what I did, and I swear to God, it worked. I swear on my life, it really? worked. Yeah, yeah. Like people give Lester shit for not like, but I get it. Oh no, it's straight mental, man. It's a real thing. It's it's nerve wracking. I also dropped a punt in, in my freshman year. I was a punt returner. And I was terrified to Coach like, return was a punt. for an injury. And I, uh, <laughs> I ended up. You just had to like force yourself to do it. I don't yeah. know, it, but there's no like Williams. way to break the yips. You're really. a punt returner. Yeah, Williams. <laughs> this is <laughs> Williams. Get out there. <laughs> but I was also like the biggest kid and fastest kid on the team at that yeah. point. And then that's that was the last that was the last year of that. You definitely. Went Freshman for a ball year? that you were definitely supposed to stay away from. What's that? You definitely went for a ball that they were like, "Yo, get away, get away, get no, away." No, it was it was a can of corn. Went right through, just right through the bread basket. Just muffed it. It was standard. But in punt. your career, did you ever go touch one like that was supposed to be? I never far, fair caught. That no. was against the rules for me. That's pussy's <laughs> only, only pussy's fair catch. But Paul Turner, that I mean, I, I'm sure there's plenty of people watching who who did it. But <laughs> you're looking up, but you can feel. 11 fucking people looking to decapitate you like underneath your vision kind of yeah and but i would never fair caught no never. absolutely fucking not all-time jackass kid johnny knoxville yeah yeah P returning With punts the tennessee the usc team or usc, tennessee USC. Jersey. yeah oh in the tennessee jersey. yeah he was That's wearing was. the tennessee yeah. jersey and he goes out and he's taking punts from usc and, and they're like just troy <laughs> palomalu <laughs> yeah brian <laughs> brian cushing yeah was, was it it was shit. brian cushing it right? was they had that they That's had that si cover perfect. And I think it was Cushing, Clay Matthews, and uh, he was like running slant routes, um, and they were just fucking <laughs> Ray, Mal they, they Ray like, They legitimately were like just massacring Johnny Knoxville. Yeah, those fucking. I forgot about that nuts. skit. That is a great skit. Um, but yeah, that's uh. Well, that, yips that's aside, yips. what what was the other thing? There was a thing that got us hot before the show, and someone said, "Wait till the after show." It was about 
Oh, we were saying. Well, we were talking. We covered a lot. Go, shotgun gate. Yeah, go. No, that. no, no. It was Watergate. Yeah, what it no, was. no. But the sheet says shotgun gate. Yeah. So, like, go subscribe to Redline Radio. We talk about our drive to Pittsburgh and whatnot, and um, yes. and we talk about how White Sox Dave was in Shotgun, and he only played his music. That's whatever. not true. A lot of, that is not was, true. That, I was I was paraphrasing, Dave. I, don't I think wanna, the crux you, comes back. Okay. I, I was par- like, he can't. <laughs> no paraphrase with this guy can't do it need details but um, you you could have just said what actually he demanded happened. the aux yeah okay that's fair this is becoming the gate gate <laughs> yeah so i was talking like how i just love that I, everything has a gate on it yeah and uh who brought it to our attention i did well uh, it was are, like, are like you you know, sure? the gates never existed before did, watergate yeah where'd it come from chief watergate hey Which chief is, yeah you know how i know how do you know watergate is because there's a mural of Bob Woodward in my high school. He went to Wheaton Central. No kidding. Him. Yes. I didn't say you didn't know. But you said that I didn't. Bob, that's, it is kind of what you No, I didn't. Like, who's no, I Bob just, Woodward and how many A's he, hard he, I mean, he, he's still Bob Woodward? He's, very prominent journalist. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, is he the journalist that, that broke Watergate? Water yeah. 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 He, he's deep throat. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. What do I favorite? Now, I mean, what a, a very notable time when we did serious radio. The Barcelona Chicago era was – and White Sox, Dave, talked about an alumnus of his high school, and he had just been charged with heinous crimes. <laughs> he, had, he, had, he had no idea. No, that we, was uh, yeah, we, Dennis Hastert at North Central. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't like, know that. Yeah. They were like, we were like bragging about like famous alumni. He's like, why well, we got him? And then, Speaker of the house. Yeah, yeah and we all like Pedophile. heard him. We're like, whoa. You know, I didn't. Like, I didn't hear it at that point. <laughs> missed it. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> it was like perfect for like yeah. a radio. It was set. too authentic to suggest yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah no, I, I just you. didn't know that he was yeah. a kitty porn guy or whatever. It was. <laughs> no, I, think, like, I don't know. Let's look into this allegedly. Who's ever editing this? Please I don't think it this. is a legend. Well, I don't care. I, okay. I want right. it looked into. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we got the Belushis. We got Bob Woodward, mm-hmm. Edwin Hubble, Hubble Space Telescope. Okay. And then WSD. <laughs> to murder his <laughs> row. Amongst Super Bowl champions, Hubble Red Space Grange. Telescope. Hubble is a big yeah, I love the Hubble telescope. Wait, you have Hubble? Yeah. That was my middle school, Hubble Middle School. It's Mariano's now. It's not there anymore. Oh, really? They knocked it down. (laughs) How are they going to fucking disrespect the telescope at a grocery store? Uh, There's still Hubble Middle School, but it's not. It's a new building. They moved the sign. Oh, nice. And people love it, Mariano. That's good. Yeah, it's true. Trade out in elementary school, put in some fresh guac, rotisserie chicken, cook it free at the place. I'm a big rotisserie chicken guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that's it. That's the rundown. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe to the Barcelona Chicago YouTube. Subscribe to Redline Radio, The Dog Walk. We'll be there for a bunch of Chicago content if you want more of us. So that's it for today. We'll be back next Wednesday.